Top of the Afternoon, Sunday Sessions, episode 15. Welcome to the Amazon Lit YouTube channel. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button and watch some of the content here. There's a ton of information to help you grow your Amazon business. Thanks for joining, stay lit. What's up everybody? Excited to have you all here. Just drop your questions in the comments and I'll get them answered. It's pretty straightforward. Private label or wholesale? Both. Both. Why not both? What criteria do you follow in deciding if a product is a good buy or not? Minimum buying criteria is 10% gross profit margin and two dollars. Um, also we want to make sure Amazon isn't dominating the listing all over the listing crushing it getting all the sales we also want, also want to make sure that the listing is not receiving ip complaints you also want to be checking the past history on keepa making sure that the keepa chart makes sense um, and that the product is profitable consistently are you an llc and if so how did you set it up um yes we, we are an llc and just type in amazon lit llc in a youtube search bar and a great video showing you step by step how to register an llc will populate um, it'll really help you complete the process rather quickly. In most states, you can create an LLC in about 25 minutes, if not less, and you can get your EIN number rather quickly. Other states, it'll take a couple days, but the initial setup process is about 20 to 25 minutes as well. It's pretty straightforward. And I encourage anybody operating a business to have a limited liability company because there's some tax incentives and it protects you, right? The limited liability aspect of it protects you. God forbid anything was to happen to your business. JVH said, let's sell in Europe. You can send it to me. So we're, we're actually in the process of uh, building out our Europe side of our business. Someone posted a recent video saying that the that he would start with PL if he was to start again on Amazon. I, I, I disagree. I wouldn't start with private label if I was to start on Amazon again. I would start with wholesale. Uh, first I'd start with retail arbitrage and then I'd dive into wholesale. Then I'd use the money I'm making from wholesale to reinvest into a private label product. And the reason why is because you're gonna gain a lot of experience in those first three to six months Month selling on Amazon, right? If you don't understand their fees, whether it's FBA fees, referral fees, the structure, how Amazon ranking works, right? How to read keeper charts, how to understand competitive sellers. If you don't understand that information, creating a private label product is going to be very challenging for you to do. So I encourage you to kind of dive deep into the process of selling on Amazon before you go creating a private label product. It'll save you a lot of money. What do you do with products that used to be a good buy, but price keep dropping as a new seller joining the list, as new sellers joining the listings? Do you leave it or race to the bottom? It depends. So we're looking at, once again, the Keepa chart. I can't express it enough. We got a great video right here on Keepa charts, so check that out as well. Um, but you got to understand the Keepa charts because you'll see trends there, right? If the price is tanking and the rank is going up, that means the listing has a slim chance of recovering. If the price is going down and the, and the rank is just continuing to go higher, that means there's a slim chance of recovery. So in that case, I would drop our price and just take a lower margin, break even, or even lose money on it because inventory sitting around is not making you any money, right? You have to make a decision also based on your competitive sellers and what their stock levels are. If the listing selling 200 units a month and a seller just jumped in with a thousand units, Technically, that seller has five months of inventory if he wins 100% of the buy box, which he's probably not. So he probably has six to nine months of inventory. You can't compete with that. So what we'll do is we'll just drop our price, call it a L, short-term L, reinvest the money that we get back on that next reimbursement check back into other profitable products and just turn that a few times. How do you vet distributors so you don't waste your time with all of the bad ones? So I'm looking for a few things. One, I'm looking for a great communication. Two, I'm looking for an Excel catalog. If they have that, then they're already on my radar. I've never met a distributor a, that's ever hustled us, right? So I never, you know, sent a distributor money and they never responded or never shipped the products. That's never happened to us in the past eight years of doing business with hundreds of vendors and placing 
thousands, if not tens of thousands of orders. So that shouldn't really be a concern. But a great way is just look on Google, right? Explore their company a little bit. Someone has probably posted something. And also jump on a phone call or exchange some emails with your account rep because just the lingo that they're talking about and their wording and the way they're discussing things. And if you're talking about MOQs, you know, or uh, shipping fees or case packs and they don't understand that, then most likely they're not a company you want to do business with. But like I said, in my time in the industry, I've never met any wholesalers that are out to hustle people. They're they're in the business of making money. The only thing you should be mindful for is those wholesalers that send out email blasts where it's like ASIN, UPC, price, quantity, and a picture with the Amazon listing. You always got to be mindful of that because you don't know how many people they're sending that to. And unless you're buying all of the inventory they have, we stay away from those. Because let's say they're sending out, let's say they got an ASIN for this calculator, right? And they're, they say five bucks and they include the ASIN in the email and they have 10,000 of them and you only buy 400. That means there's another 9,600 of these calculators out there in the market that other Amazon sellers are going to buy. So by the time you get your inventory into stock, there's going to be about 25 other sellers on that listing. And then the price is going to do exactly what we were just going to, talking about. It's going to tank because the more competitive a listing is, the lower the price will get because more people are competing for the buy box. It's basic supply and demand. I like how you guys work. Keep on the good vibes. Absolutely. I've seen a distributor that posts picks and links on the Amazon listing seem sketchy. It is, it is. And I share that through my own experience of doing this for multiple years. We purchase from a lot of companies like that. And we always, our margins were always between five and 12% after all was said and done. Don't get me wrong and get some heavy hitters, but then the, sh the crappier products that you're buying from them, they bring down your margins. And what we're always looking at and what you guys and girls should always be looking at is not just individual ASIN profits, but your profits as a whole. And then you can get even more granular with that and look at your gross profits and your, your dollar amount profits on average per sale per supplier because that's really going to indicate if the supplier is good or not. Because you might place an order with 20 SKUs on it and 10 of those SKUs crush it, right? And then another five, they do okay. Another five, you lose money on. But you want to look at the average profit margin for the supplier as a whole, because that's really going to tell me and it will tell you, hey, I want to place another order with this vendor. Because sometimes you place an order and, you know, the 10 that crush it and the 10 that do horrible, it's a wash. You end up breaking even. So in that case, we'll, you know, analyze the metrics, analyze the data and make an educated decision based on the other products that they're offering if we should place a reorder on that or not. So this is from Jazzy, Jazzle Y. Is it a, a good idea that as we grow in the wholesale business, I should look out for wholesalers that have higher requirements, like higher MOQs? Absolutely. Absolutely. You should definitely keep an eye out for them because as you expand your business, you're going to be able to expand your supplier reach and expand your relationships. So absolutely, you want to be keeping an eye out for them. And also, you want to be attending a trade show. Great trade show that all of you should be at is ASD in Las Vegas from August 22nd to August 25th of 2021. It's a little less than 30 days away. I encourage you to book your airfare and book your hotel now. Write it off. It's all a business expense. Travel and food is 100% tax deductible at the end of the year to decrease your taxable income, which means you're paying Uncle Sam and in our case, Uncle Murphy, because we live in New Jersey, less money that's the name of the game this is from Zynod do you go deep on initial buy or test a few units first it depends it depends once again we'll take it back to the keep a chart if you guys if and girls get one thing out of this live it's dive deep into keep because a lot of my answers to these questions are like understand the keep a chart uh, but it depends if the keep a chart makes sense we'll go deep sometimes We'll purchase, we'll go all in. First purchase order. Other times we'll test the, the SKU if the data is just not making sense. Once you win the buy box, do you keep it until your inventory is exhausted on that product? No. So the way the buy box works, it's algorithmic. So they're weighing a few things into buy box priority, right? They're weighing inventory levels. They're weighing your price. 
They're weighing your fulfillment method, whether it's FBA or FBM. And they're also weighing your seller feedback, how long you've been selling on that listing, how long you've been selling on Amazon. They're also weighing in your location and the location of your inventory within Amazon's fulfillment center. And they're rotating that buy box. So some days you might get you know, 50% of the day. So 12 hours you're in the buy box. Other days you might only get the buy box for one hour. They're rotating that buy box based on an analyzation of those metrics that I just covered. BB Keeney said, thanks for the valuable info. I wish we knew about you three years ago. It would have saved us a lot of money. Absolutely, I'm happy to help. I believe you're coming out to Vegas as well. I'm excited to see you out there. Um, I think you sent me a DM. You're either coming to the Vegas event or the August event event in uh, Miami so I'm excited to see you out there and absolutely that's that's the purpose of why we do this because initially in our first three years we bikini we probably uh, we probably spent mid six figures on mistakes so I'm talking you know three to five hundred thousand dollars in just poor buys inefficient processes you know, not capitalizing on Amazon reimbursements, all this stuff that we just didn't know about. So Sebastian and I, we were in the office and we we're like, you know what, let's provide all this information to people. You know, we'll provide a lot of it through for free through Instagram, through Facebook, through YouTube, through TikTok. And then we'll also offer a paid mentoring service where people who are really committed to their business can grow. Your favorite, most successful product category. I'd say grocery. Grocery is my fave. Definitely my fave. Simon said, hey man, we met down in Orlando and you are such a real OG. Anyone reading this, go to any events they host. You will not be disappointed. Absolutely. I appreciate the love, Simon. It was a pleasure meeting you down in Orlando. I encourage you to come out to our ASD Vegas event we're hosting on August 23rd. It's going to be a movie. It's, going to, it's literally going to change lives. We'd love to have you out there. We'll be posting about it this week. When Darkness said, do we sell in the U.S. or only international? So we primarily sell in the U.S. We also sell in Canada and Mexico and are in the process of getting our products over to the United Kingdom. Just hired a VA for $50 and they provide me 5 to 10 products to scale. What's your opinion? <sighs> Listen, I'm gonna be transparent here, right? You gotta consider it's all about cost versus reward, right? So if you're paying someone 50 bucks, you're gonna get $50 worth of work, you know? Not to say that this person isn't phenomenal and can provide you great products at that $50 mark, but you get what you pay for. You know, I see always new business owners wanna cut corners. And I get it, funds are tight and experience, experience is low. So I understand it, but there's certain things you cannot cut corners on. And for me personally, being in the industry for eight years, one of the things we do not cut corners on are our purchasers, the people buying our products. We pay them well and we make sure that they are professionals and very good at what they do because they are the foundation of your Amazon business. If your Amazon business isn't getting inventory in, you're not growing. If you're not getting inventory, there's nothing for your pickers or your packers to do. So it's important to get profitable inventory consistently. Is it bad to sell a product with a lot of variants or as long as it sells a good amount each month? No, it's not bad to sell a variation listing. We, we sell in a lot of variation listings. You definitely just want to analyze the data and make sure that that listing is actually moving and it's not just the paranasin or one of the other variations. I'm trying to make it out to Vegas from the 21st to the 24th. If I can make it, do I need to register to attend your event? How to navigate trade shows to meet up. So in a couple days, we'll be posting on Instagram uh, about our trade show walkthrough and how to register. So to, to attend the trade show is free. You just got to get out there. Um, how we help you explore the trade show and navigate it more optimal to have the most amazing experience possible and meet the most vendors is we offer something called the trade show walkthrough, which is a paid service where we meet you in the morning on the first day of the event and we show you how to 
go up to these vendors, what vendors to be looking out for, how to navigate the aisles, what needs to be in your mind to really have the best experience possible because you're going to be lost if it's your first trade show. And then also on the August 23rd, we're hosting a live event in Vegas that's going to be pretty amazing. How would you know a product is about to have an IP complaint before you post it? The third, keep a chart. Look at the third, keep a chart. It has the number of sellers on there. It's a great indication. Also look if it's brand registered and has enhanced brand content. Also look to see if the brand's selling on it. Look only if Amazon's selling on it. I just got engaged to sell Ali brands. Have any experience with them? They are super good rank on Amazon. Yeah, we've sold some Ali in the past. I forgot why we stopped selling it. I wasn't sure if it was an account health issue or we just had trouble sourcing it. Um, I set my first hazmat FBA, even though I have the lowest price, I don't get buy box. Any suggestions? I really have to look at the listing, but you know, there might be an OG on there who's been selling on the listing for six months and they're getting priority. They might also have have a thousand units in stock when you have four your inventory might not have been spread out to all of the fulfillment centers yet so amazon's not prioritizing you in the buy box until they do that it might still be in transit so there's a few different things you can look out for i've had a bad week with a lot of refunds and bad reviews i just need positive vibes to keep you going well here's the positive vibes my friend do not give up do not stop grinding do not beat yourself up over those negative reviews, right? There's light at the end of the tunnel. Just keep moving forward. Stay as positive as possible. If that means taking a couple minutes out of your day to make a gratitude list or just spend some time in quiet by yourself and to appreciate all of the beautiful things you have in your life, just do not quit, my friend. Do not give up. Don't quit before the miracle happens because if you keep going and you are consistent, I promise you that you will see success. There's light at the end of this tunnel. Thank you for the valuable info and your integrity to really help us out. No problem. Thanks for all the info. Would you say I need an LLC EIN before going to trade show walkthrough with you guys? It's not a requirement, but it will just make the process when you get back from the trade show of opening up these wholesale accounts, it'll make it much easier. So I would encourage you to watch this video that we're gonna post here. You could also search on YouTube, Amazon Lit LLC. It shows you step-by-step -step how to set that up. But it, to attend the trade show, you do not need that EIN number. Um, but it will just help for after the trade show when you start reaching out to these companies and they ask for it. Well, everybody, it's a wrap. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining. I hope everybody has a phenomenal weekend. Rest of your weekend. It's Sunday over here in New York. Um, I'm on East Coast time. But keep an eye out for those links. We'll be posting them on Instagram in the next couple days. We'd love to see you in Vegas. I appreciate each and every one of you for spending the past, you know, 30 minutes with me. It means the world. And have a beautiful afternoon. Stay lit.